Well, if you have a Starlink dish, something like this, or maybe you're thinking about getting Starlink, then this video is for you. I've had my system for a year. There's been a lot of changes, three significant changes, and I want to pass that information along with my lessons learned to you. So stick around. So I've learned a lot over the last 12 months about how to use my system, how to use it efficiently, and I'm talk to that in just a minute because efficiency has become real important. How to make sure you have the proper coverage and some things you want to do, some things you don't want to do. So let me give you my overall impression first off so there's no guesswork. I still like it. But there are some considerations I'm going through right now. Do I want to keep it as far as cost-wise goes? Or maybe do I want to expand the system and pick up on some of the other options that are available? So let me start by talking about the three significant changes that have happened over the past 12 months. The most significant change has been the price increase. Here in the United States, it was $99 per month, but about mid-year of 2022, that went up to $110 per month. So that's a pretty big price increase since Starlink is not you know, a really discounted product as it is. You're paying premium price and hopefully you're getting premium service. So even though the price has gone up, I've stuck with it primarily because if you go back and watch one of my other videos, this is my sixth video on Starlink. You see I've done a cost comparison. I've talked about options that you may have in your own area. Options are real important and for me, I just didn't have them. So that's why I went with Starlink and I'm still there right now. The second major change in Starlink for 2022 is what's called portability. It's where you can take your dish and your router out on the road. That's good for RVers who change locations periodically and you want to take your service with you. Well, you can do that now, but it comes with a fee. It's an additional $25 per month that will get the service to you in an area that already has Starlink service available. So if you go somewhere that it's not available, you're just gonna be out of luck. But that $25 additional fee for portability will let you carry it with your RV, carry it with your boat, wherever you're gonna go. And if there's service there, you'll continue to get it for that additional charge. But the significant change for 2022 that I'm struggling with is there is now a bandwidth threshold and as a residential user, that threshold is one terabit. Now that seems like a lot of data, but let me explain to you that it adds up pretty darn quickly. So you'll get your one terabit. If you go over that, then there's an option of paying 25 cents for each additional gigabyte, or you'll go on what's a non-priority service, which means your system may slow down somewhat. Now for me, I stream television service, which means I take my TV right off of the internet using the Fire Stick, and it really uses a lot of bandwidth if you've got multiple televisions. And we usually have two televisions, plus we've got the iPad and our telephones hooked to the internet when we come into the house. So looking at this chart, this usage chart for this one month, I was bumping right up against that one terabit limit. Luckily, I didn't go over the limit and I didn't have to deal with any of that, but if you're not streaming video, you're probably not gonna have this problem. Something to keep in mind though, and something to keep tabs with. And you can see this chart that shows your usage by going into your account online and click manage. It'll come up and it'll show you the chart and show you the usage of how you've done for that particular billing period. It runs billing period to billing period and not specifically for a particular month. So to try to manage some of this data usage, uh, what we've done is we're not watching the television, we turn it off, just shut it off. But sometimes that's not enough. I have found out with some of those applications like Pluto, you have to actually take the application back to home and then turn off the TV for the data streaming to stop. Now you can watch your phone on each device that's connected to your router and you can see if it's streaming data or not. So try that out, just try cutting off your television and go and look at that device on your phone and see if it's still streaming data. If it is, you need to go back in there, take that particular application, go back to home on that application 
and then turn off your television and I think the streaming will go away. So you can get in trouble by just shutting down your TV. Some of those apps will keep pulling that data down off of the internet and you'll continue to run up your usage. That's something to watch for and be careful with that. A couple of lessons learned that I have from this past year are first off, weather. I'm gonna put you a video link right up here to a video I made about how weather will affect your reception. Of course, it comes with a device that will melt the snow and the ice as it gets onto your dish, but things like heavy rain and uh, will stop your system from working. I live in Florida, we get a heavy rain periodically. My system will just go offline and it can be for minutes or up to like a half hour or so depending on the storm. So I, we just have to sit there and wait. There's nothing you can do about that. So weather can impact your reception for sure. And the other thing talking about weather is power outages. If you have a power outage, you know, a surge is not gonna be very good on those electronics that come in the package that's in your router. So you don't wanna have any surges going through there. You wanna have a surge protection on there. And there's another video that I created right up here and it talks about surge protection and power supplies. I've got a temporary power supply on my system where if my electricity in my house goes out, it will kick in, it will supply battery power so that that router will not have to shut down. And I can continue to use the internet, but it'll only last about several hours. I did a kind of a rough test with it and just running the router only on my system was somewhere between three and five hours I could get on that. So check out that video and see if that's something you wanna invest in to protect your equipment and also allow you to continue to use your internet during a power outage. Looking to the future, what does Starlink hold? Well, for us that already have the service, I'm not sure it holds much of anything except getting what you're already getting. <laughs> if you're in an area that doesn't have the service, then yeah, there are satellites going up all the time that's just going to expand that capability and provide service to more and more people. Now, as far as the price goes, I don't know what will happen if the price goes up again for me. Now, I've made videos about the limited options that I have for internet, but there are other options and they're a lot cheaper. They're just not as reliable and not nearly as fast as Starlink is, but at $110 per month, I think I've pretty much maxed out. If uh, Elon Musk raises that up again, I'm gonna have to do some serious thinking about whether or not I'm going to stick with it. Now, I do RV. I haven't opted in for the portability charge yet. I may do that, but then again, when I go on the road, it's all about having fun, experiencing the new places, and not so much about being on the internet. And after all, we can get limited internet most anywhere you go, even if it's dropping by McDonald's to check your mail or to or to do something like that. So just keep that in mind. Again, overall, I'm happy with my system. I think it was a good investment. Outages for this year have been very few and they have only been due to weather and a rare occasion there would be something due to a network issue for just a few minutes. And I mean three or four minutes and those are few and far between. So the reliability issue I think is very good with this system. Just have to be cautious about, you know, the weather is going to impact it some. Power outages, don't let your equipment get fried. And I think it's really a good system. I look forward to many years of service, just as I am right now. Check out the links to my other Starlink videos, especially if you're considering, you know, coming in and getting a Starlink system. I put a lot of tips out there about installation and routing the cable and how to get it hooked up, minimum requirements and all that sort of thing of thinking about your other options because Starlink really is not for everyone and I have one video that's just that is Starlink for everyone and who benefits from Starlink. So I want to thank everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. If you can do me one favor, hit that subscribe button, ring the little bell, and if you've got any questions or comments, please put them down below and I'll try to get back with you as soon as possible. It's a learning process for everyone, so the more comments we can get on Starlink, the better, and maybe even Elon is reading and he might pick up some tips along the way. So until next time, stay safe, enjoy your internet, and look out for that bad weather.